Dark Souls is a series of games that became the standard for difficult video games. There is now a Dark Souls of everything. A Dark Souls of every gaming platform, of every gaming genre, of every hot sauce, of every little brother. The games may have given us the most annoying phrase to describe anything, but how are the games? Well, we're not reviewing those today. We're reviewing the original Dark Souls of the Dark Souls games. The one me and maybe five other people on the planet have actually played. Demon Souls. Demon Souls is a game with a story. I'm sure you can understand exactly what's going on in this intro sequence. If not, let's go ahead and clear it up for you. <gasps> words, 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 large looming shadow, title, fight scene, stab, sudden explosion, new enemy, ghost guys with a bow, back to fight scene, four ghost guys, dragon with multiple mounts. I hope that cleared it up for you. If not, then you can read it up on the lore another time and get the full story. Basic gist is, there was a kingdom. It fell to monsters, and now you're gonna go murder all of them. Create your monster conquering dude or dudette with the character creation part of the game that's as intricate as any Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. Then, thrust yourself into the real synopsis of the story in this game told through this opening cutscene. Which you can read about later. Basically, as I said before, the kingdom of Boletaria has fallen to demon-stealing monsters, and you are the only one that can stop them. Them. You're brought to the tutorial level where you'll face basic level enemies until you learn the controls. Then it'll pit you against these pricks, the Blue-Eyed Silver Knight. These guys have pretty advanced AI and are littered throughout the entire game. Of course, there's a very simple way to deal with them, but I'll shroud that in mystery. Who knows how to do it? Who knows? Anyway, kill this guy, kill that guy, block that arrow, slice that guy up, and as you play you may come to a few conclusions about Demon Souls right off the bat. 1. Pressing pause does not pause the game. This means if you want to switch items, equipment, or weapons, you gotta make sure you're not near any enemies, otherwise they'll murder you while you're switching your greaves. 2. Demon Souls likes to surprise you. Enemies are placed on the cusp of corners so you can't see them coming before they stab you, slice you, hit you, or knock you down. You have to be prepared to defend yourself every single time you turn a corner. Or a low-level enemy prick or an unseen trap can and will end you. 3. Ragdoll physics are the best. I bet you don't believe me. Think about it like this. That one Steve that stabbed you as you turned the corner now has no choice but to endure you laughing at him as you kick him off a cliff. Nah, f*** you Steve. Slice, roll, and stab your way through the tutorial until you come to your final fog. Walk through it and meet the very first boss of this game. Yep, this brick shit house against your weak ass. This battle isn't super difficult, minus the demon that can one-shot you, but that's okay. You're meant to die. Also, you will never get another chance to fight this guy in this place again. I don't know where the area is located, but I would have loved a second shot at him. There's another one of him later in the game, but I wanted to fight this one again. Anyway, you die and your soul is brought back to life within the Nexus, which connects Boletaria. Something, something, Archstone, something, something, something story. Anyway, you'll notice your health has been cut in half. Well, that's not fair. You can fix this by defeating boss demons to reclaim your physical body. Alright, cool concept. Now let's meet the people you're trapped in the Nexus with. Andy, if you would do the honors. We have the oh, worst shopkeep ever because you can't sell simple. items to him, you can only you buy them. A plan soul. that will only cause him to run out of stock oh, sooner or later. He's yeah, a card, and he's short. Storage guy. I'm stockpiled That's his old shtick, he stores came, things. Soul grab lady. She's dressed in all black and looks like someone sewed a pancake to her face. She offers you upgrades to your stats, but only after you beat the first boss in the first world. Next we have Stone Kid. He's made of stone. He is a one-off NPC that appears once, then you forget about him. Who else do we have? Oh, Ghost Guy! He sits there. That's his whole deal. Here we have a dude. He's basically useless. And a host of other interchangeable characters you can choose to and not to care about. Also, hurting people in the Nexus will cause hostility, and the Nexus doesn't offer too many places to hide, my friend. Enjoy the persistent enemy you created, you sadist! Thank you, Andy. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, there are these wispy guys running around on screen. Well, that's because those are other players playing Demon Souls at the same time as you. You can physically see them doing things. Other players logged into Demon Souls servers can leave helpful messages, run around in their own game, and even leave you short holograms of how they died, whether it be to an enemy, a trap, or absolutely nothing in particular. We'll get to the worst part of this online system later. For now, go ahead and touch your first art stone and come to your first world, Boletaria Palace. From here, your adventure jettisons itself from the screen and onto your shoulder. Kill things, collect souls, kill more things, get more souls, spend souls on weapons and upgrades. Dungeon crawling in this game does feel legitimately fun as you pull switches, watch out for traps, and kill enemies. It feels like a different type of gauntlet game. I do have a lot of fun going through this. Well, that wasn't very nice. As I was saying, I do have legitimate fun going through this area. 
When you die in this game, you leave behind a bloodstain and all of your souls. If you go back to that spot and touch the bloodstain, you can get all of your souls back. If you die in your physical form, you'll lose that form and your HP will be cut in half again. Also, watch your green stamina bar. That will allow you to run, dodge, guard, and attack. If you run out, you can't do these things. I didn't mention it before because it won't become a problem until this level. Makes sense though, as this is the first real level of the game and is a prelude to the rest of the game. Back to the worst part of this always online system, From Software included this fancy little feature that allows you to invade others' games and kill them as a black phantom or help them as a ghost type guy. This was one of the main grabs of the game as people with friends could beat up blobs together and assholes could ruin hours of soul collection just by being a jackass. I never used this feature myself, but other people sure did. I think this game spawned my hate for games that have an always online feature and allow random people to jump into your game. This or Dead Island. Stibble, stabble, and stumble your way through this level until you come to the second real boss of this game, the Phalanx. This boss is made of many of these shield blob guys and is very vulnerable to fire and pierce attacks. Because the sword takes too long to perform a pierce attack, I suggest having a spear or lance to fight this thing. It'll make the battle much easier with that, a shield, and a metric f ton of fire bombs. It's not necessarily a difficult boss, it just has a lot of HP for a first time player. It also throws spears at you. They hurt. Destroy the globby to get your humanity back. Then collect the demon's soul and go back to the nexus. This is the basic formula for the whole game. Go into area, go through dungeon-like areas, discover boss A, come back to nexus, heal up, go back out there. Each area has around three bosses and provides varying levels of difficulty. As fun to run through as this game was, and as fantastic and difficult as some of the bosses were, nothing can shake my main criticism of this whole game. The final boss. Old King Allant. This is one of the most disappointing final bosses ever. This game is built off of a system of scaring you by killing you, forcing you to go back home, get more powerful, and come back and try again. Each boss felt threatening and dangerous. Even the phalanx, even the fucking phalanx, felt dangerous. It was a blob six times your size that could throw spears at you. While this is not the most threatening boss, everyone still had moments of, I'm not going to make it. I'll have to power up some more. Before they finally did it, the final phase bosses of the four archstones built up the player for this epic conclusion. The game alluded to the old one, this gigantic, all-consuming mouth as the final boss. Your hopes are stupid high as you discover at the end you climb into the old one. You're confused, you're scared. What's it gonna do? Eat you? One-shot you? You travel in, breaking branches on your way in, afraid. Suddenly you come upon this deformed blobbish creature lurking in a shallow puddle. You arm yourself. You prepare. Is it the tongue? Is it the heart? Is it a testicle? You cleave your sword into it and discover it's fucking weak as shit. A smart, powered up player can defeat this thing in 10 hits. This is the final boss? This literal pile of shit is the final boss? Sure, symbolism and all that, I get it. But Vanguard planted himself firmly on my abdomen and has been taking large, smelly shits on me for the whole game, and one of his shits is the final boss? I figured lulling a soul eating demon god back to sleep meant harpooning him like you had to do with the dragon in the mines. But no, slice this thing up, stab it with your weakest weapon, then choose your ending to the game. You can explain the beautiful symbolism of this corrupt king being overtaken by the power he wanted to control while you decide to either take his place or save the world. You can tell me he became this deformed blob due to his greed and the belief that no one wants to go on. You can do that all you want, but in the end, it's such a crappy final boss. The sum of everything you've learned, everything you've had to unlearn. The game built you up with every door, every hallway, and every turn of a corner by making you fear it, teaching you to be aware and check your angles. But to have the skills taught to be wasted on this tutorial level powered enemy is an ugworthy moment. If you wipe off the literal smudge the final boss is, this game is pretty solid. While some may not like the fuck you until you love it method this game seems to portray, it really is a fun adventure game. Bosses are large and menacing, dungeons feel legitimately like they were once populated and then fell into a dilapidated state when the kingdom fell to shit. and the demons that now populate the worlds you discover are fun to kill most of the time. Demon Souls is the perfect prelude to the Dark Souls and Bloodborne series, establishing the frame in which most enemies, bosses, dungeons, weapons, and fights in the future games must fit theirs into. While not being the subject of the annoying phrase we all use to describe anything difficult, it was the prequel to it, and in as many ways, better. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe if you want to because that's the best way to tell me that this review was timely and not at all done before they shut down the servers on the 28th. Nope. But if you want even more Souls fun, you can go follow this guy. He's going to be playing through all of the Souls games starting with Demon Souls starting on February. Thank you for watching and subscribing to me and my good buddy White Skull Heart. See you all next time.